Lightburn's printing cut tool is used to align your current project to graphics you've previously output. This is done by aligning your laser to a series of registration marks, allowing you to accurately cut or engrave around pre-existing output without the need for a camera. It is commonly used to cut or engrave on a workpiece bigger than a laser's max work area to continue a previously removed job that needs additional passes or to cut out a printed design. In this video, we will cover the steps of using the print and cut tool as we cut out a sheet of printed Lightburn stickers. Many of the concepts in this video will be helpful even when using this tool for other applications. Before beginning, there are a few requirements. The first is that you must use absolute coordinates as your positioning mode. This means that your laser needs to have limit switches so that it can home to a repeatable origin. The second is that this tool is specifically for gantry-based lasers. It will work with different laser types such as diode or CO2, but if your machine is galvo-based, it is not compatible. For this video, I am using the Orter Laser Master 3, a diode laser with 10 watt output. The stickers being cut are printed on half sheet paper based shipping labels. Dialing in the settings for the material you are planning on cutting should be your first step. Using Lightburn Speed and Power Test, I was able to determine a speed of 1000 millimeters per minute and a power of 80% to be the best settings for my laser. To use print and cut, you will need two registration marks for laser alignment. These can be added in the original design or in Lightburn if there are two distinct corners in your graphic. For this video, since we are firing our laser during alignment, we will add registration marks to preserve our design. A link to our documentation covering aligning to corners is available in the description below. The easiest registration marks to make are just simple crosshairs using two lines. You don't want them to be very thick so that you can easily spot the mark from your laser. Using a lighter color and even adding a small white dot at the center can also help with visibility. For placing the markers, the further away from each other in your design, the better. If your alignment is not perfect, more distance between them minimizes the amount of offset you will have. With the registration marks in place, we can send this job off to our printer. Before printing out multiple sheets, double check that your markers are clearly visible. If not, you can go back and make adjustments as needed. We also need to export our design as a vector for Lightburn. The last step before using print and cut is setting your laser focus. Place your sticker sheet down and adjust the height of your laser to the top of the material surface. Due to how light the sheet is, you will want to tape down all of the edges to prevent any unwanted shifting during your cut. In Lightburn, go to File, Import, and select the vector you exported to open the file. This should include both the sticker design and registration marks. Start by checking to make sure that each crosshair is a single object and not separate lines. If not, you'll need to ungroup them from everything else and group the lines together. For stickers, you will likely want an offset from your design. We chose to apply an offset to our stickers. Selecting our dragons and clicking the offset button in the left toolbar, we will apply a four millimeter outside offset to the outer shapes only and check delete the original objects before clicking okay to apply. We will delete the inner offset since we only want the laser to cut outside of our printed designs. Then adjust your speed and power settings in the cuts and layers window to the settings you previously found ideal for cutting your material. You can also turn off the output for the markers or move them to a tool layer so that they are not engraved when you run your job. If you haven't already, set your start from mode to absolute coordinates in the laser window. Then click the home button to make sure the laser's origin is set correctly. Since we will be firing our laser to verify alignment, the laser fire button must be enabled in the move window. To enable the fire button, click on the wrench icon in the top toolbar or edit and device settings to open the device settings window. Then toggle on the enable laser fire button and click OK to apply. Now under the move window, you should see a power text box and fire button. Clicking the fire button will toggle your laser on or off. The correct amount of power needed will depend on your laser and material, but 2% was a good starting point for the Laser Master 3. Up in the top menu, click on the Laser Tools dropdown. Then under Print and Cut, select Start Wizard. This will open the Print and Cut Wizard window. We can drag this around our workspace as needed. Before continuing, make sure you are wearing appropriately rated laser safety glasses. We will be firing the laser multiple times to help with alignment. At this point, we need to align our laser to the center of either of our registration marks. To do this, use the directional arrows in the move window. 
You can adjust both the speed and travel distance for each click using the text boxes in this window. It is usually easier to start with a larger number under distance to get the head of the laser in the area of the marker and then drop it down as you try to get it as precisely centered as possible. Some CO2 lasers come with a red alignment laser built in. If properly calibrated, this can work to align your laser to the center of your marker or at least get you very close. But firing the laser will guarantee precise alignment. For a diode laser, once close to the center, click the fire button to enable your laser. Make sure you have the power set very low as a starting point. Our goal right now is not to mark our paper, but just to give us a visible reference point. Setting the distance to around one millimeter, start nudging the laser in small increments horizontally and then vertically to get that laser beam to the very center of your registration mark. Take your time and adjust the distance to even smaller increments when you're getting very close to the center. The next step is to verify that you are at the center, which may take a few attempts. Making sure that your laser fire button is off, raise the power. At this point, we want to make a visible mark on our paper. For the Laser Master 3, anywhere between 10 and 20% worked well. Unlike in the previous step when we clicked the fire button and left it on, here we only want it enabled for a second to leave a mark. Click the fire button and as soon as the laser fires, click it again to disable it. Then set your move distance to a number large enough to completely jog your laser out of the way. 40 millimeters was enough in my case. Click the direction arrow once to move the laser out of the way and check your target to see where the laser marked. If it is right in the center, you will not need to adjust anymore. But if it is off, click the opposite direction arrow to jog it back to its previous location, lower the distance to nudge it as needed and fire again. Repeat this process until your mark is as close to perfectly centered as possible. When you are happy with your positioning, make sure your laser is positioned back at its center location on your marker and click that marker in your Lightburn workspace to select it. When the selection is active, you will see moving squiggly lines outlining it. Click set first target position in the print and cut wizard window. Once set, the marker will be circled in your workspace and the print and cut window will update. We will need to repeat this process for our second registration mark. Starting by jogging to its general area, using low power to help us refine our positioning, and finally firing to narrow this even further. Just like with the first, when happy, click the second marker in your workspace and click set second target position in the print and cut window. When you do this, the window will update with two options, align output scaled and align output no scaling. If the design you are aligning your laser with is the same physical size as it was designed in, you will choose no scaling. In our case, when the stickers were printed, they were scaled down from the size they were designed in. Due to this, we need to select the option with scaling to ensure the size of our design in Lightburn will align with our printed sheet. Once you choose your scaling option, the print and cut window will close. Our highlighted markers and the status text in Lightburn show us that print and cut is enabled and ready. Before running this job, it is a good idea to click the preview window to verify that the output you are seeing matches what you are expecting. If you laid your sticker sheet down at an angle, the preview window will reflect that. As a final check, you can also run rubber band framing to verify scaling looks correct. Clicking this in the laser window will command the laser to travel the outer contours of your design and will quickly expose any issues with scaling. If everything checks out, we are ready to click start to begin running the job. Once the job processes, we are left with our stickers cut out and ready to be used. Print and cut will stay active until you go back to the laser tools menu, print and cut and click reset print and cut. You should now have a much better understanding on what the print and cut tool is and how to use it. The more you familiarize yourself with this process, the quicker it will go. When just starting out, take your time and double check each step. This powerful tool enhances the capabilities of your laser and opens up many new possibilities. Links to both our official documentation on Print and Cut, as well as our other videos showing alternative use cases for it are linked in the description below. Be sure to subscribe for more great videos on Mastering Lightburn.